We're here today with David Yonkai from the LULAC Political Letter, and today will be, of course, close to the 4th of July, so we're going to be speaking about the Declaration of Independence and how Pennsylvania played a role. Hello. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good to see you. Very good to be here. I'm excited to talk about this. We celebrate the signing, of course, on the 4th, but was it really signed that day? It was not signed on the 4th of July. It was actually signed in August. What happened was the New York State Legislative Delegation could not do anything because the New York State Legislature kept on going back and forth and abstaining. So these guys were delayed in actually getting permission to actually ratify the um, uh, the uh, Declaration of Independence. Plus there were other people who were coming from other parts of the country who were part of the Continental Congress that had to ratify it and they actually did it in August. But the day is celebrated today. So how was it sent to the colonies? Well that's an interesting story. What happened was uh, Fourth of July fell on a Thursday in 1776. And Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and Benjamin Franklin went to a print shop in Philadelphia. It was called Dunlap Printery. And the guy basically, they wanted to make sure that the Declaration of Independence was um, right because they wanted to make sure that there was no type of error in it. And back then, you had to actually take each character of a letter and actually set it in print. And then that's how you did it. The Declaration of Independence had 1,347 words in it. Oh, my goodness. So it was a laborious process, but Mr. Dunlap actually got that done, and by Saturday, July 6th, it was in parts of the country. But the thing is, there were less than 50 of them that were made. Wow. Yeah. So... Is it true that a Pennsylvanian refused to sign it? Right. The Pennsylvanian who refused to sign the Declaration of Independence was uh, Mr. Dickinson, okay, and John Dickinson. And the reason why he did it was because he felt that the country was not prepared to go to war. He felt that the military was not prepared to handle such a big undertaking. He also felt that the colonies had philosophical differences and felt that at some point if these philosophical differences weren't explained or weren't processed then there might be a civil war and of course there was a civil war less than 80 years later because the colonies had a hang-up about slavery the southern um, delegations wanted to keep it the northern didn't they put it out of it and then of course that became um, one of the uh, points in our history where there was a civil war, so he's quite frustrating about that. All right, so if there's a limited amount, do you think there's any originals floating around somewhere? You know what, I used to think no, but in 1989, <laughs> there was a an investment banker from Philadelphia, again, Pennsylvania plays the role, who was at a flea market, and he saw a picture that was hideous, but he liked the frame. Oh boy. So he took it home, and he was going to put something else in the frame, and he found one of the Dunlap Broad Street originals that, Broad Street, rather, originals that w was worth uh, over a million dollars. Oh, my god! So it only goes to show that money goes to money, and you also want to make sure that, you know, when you're looking at a uh, horrible picture and you buy something at a flea market, you want to check out the whole thing. Well, we got to go, but what's with your tie today? The tie, the, the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Very good. All right. David Yonker from the Lulac Political Letter. Happy 4th of July for you on your website, sir. Lulac Political Letter at blogspot.com. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next time. Take care.